to help you out. Here you go. Uh, who raised their hand over there? There was someone here who was looking for something. You, you need something right over here? That's fine too, that sticker's great. Uh, if someone needs anything? Everyone, ha everyone has, you have something, a bobby pin, a, a key bob clip? Looks like and no one's waving their hands. This is the best audience I've had. Usually there's at least two or three people that you need something. Yeah, the watch even. You can just hold the watch and have But here you go. I'm going to pass it to you. Oh, I'm terrible at that. You need something as well. Yeah, I know. So if we someone here, we go. Okay, everyone has something in their hand that they can hide. That's perfect. That means we're going to start right now. My name is David Rosenfeld, and I'm a magician and mentalist. And mentalism is just tricks of the mind. It's experiments of psychological <coughs> manipulation. My job is to try to influence and predict human behavior. Do you think you're all predictable? Yes. <laughs> so it's like a hundred percent. Just ask my wife. Everyone, please, stand up. So I studied magic and psychology and the power of the perfectly placed lie. And I'll be using all of those skills with you now. I'll have to be dishonest with you sometimes, but always honest about my dishonesty. So grab something small like a coin or keep a clip and hold it behind your back at the fingertips of both hands. Anything small held behind your back at the fingertips of both hands. In a moment, I will ask you to bring your hands out in front of you like this, concealing the object in either hand. Well, not yet, but I applaud your enthusiasm over there. Don't decide which hand you're going to put the object into yet, because I will attempt to influence this decision for you. So that for now, just keep it behind the back at the fingertips. It feels like a 50-50 choice. Nevertheless, you can either put it on this side, the left. Yes, that is not my left. That is your left. Or the other side. It's completely up to you. So when you do this in a moment, you will take your hands out in such a way that the hand on one side will be empty and the hand that's left will have the object, the coin, the thing in it. So think about it, but make a conscious decision. And when you are ready now, please bring out your closed hands. Let's see them all up there. Yes, excellent. Everyone's participating. I love it. Two rounds. This first round tells me what sort of audience you are. I tell you I'm going to try to influence your decision. And I'm counting on most of you listening out for any attempt on my part to do that. And then do the opposite. So the moment I slightly overemphasize the word left, as I did, I'm counting on most of you putting it in your right. And if it isn't your right hand, please, sit down. <laughs> two rounds, I said, two rounds. It's a nice number, but I have another round to go. <laughs> if you are still, if you are still holding the object, if you are still holding the object, <laughs> I lost that one. If you are still holding the object, you are the challengers, the people most likely to catch me out, or just the people not paying attention. Who knows? But if you're still holding the object, hands behind your back, mix it up a few times. You are the challengers, the people most likely to catch me out. And when you are ready, the remaining of you left. Please, bring out your closed hands. The second round, you should be feeling pride, like you want to catch me out when I said, you are the challengers. And when you may have done that, particularly when I make this gesture and say, make up your mind, you may have put it back in the same hand. Back in your left hand, and if it isn't your left hand, please, sit down. <laughs> Look at that. In only two rounds, most of you, and I just said it was only two rounds, most of you are out. And this is just to show you how easily influenced we can all be. In only two rounds, most of you are out. If you were still holding the object, congratulations. 
you are the people I would have the most difficulty to work with. Probably for anyone to work with. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Everyone take a seat except for you and Jeremy. I'll say you can put that down. You don't want to join me? Okay, will you join me? Please, come on up. I need participants. Don't be shy. I won't embarrass anyone, I promise. But please, join me. And, and uh, make some noise for my participant as she comes up to the stage. <laughs> And you can drop whatever was in your hand just as you come on up. What is your name? Sarah? Sarah, right over here on my left is perfect. So we're going to play a game together that is very similar to what you just experienced, Sarah. I have this game piece from a, a Bananagrams. It's a perfect shot this game if you've never heard of Bananagrams. The two tiles, leather tiles that I, I took together, are B and S. Now, this is a family show, but of course you know what BS stands for, yes? Would you hold out your hand just like this? And I'd like you to please close your hand, turn to me, and I want you to put both hands behind your back. You're going to decide in a moment which hand it's going in, and then you're going to take your hands out like this. If I guess correctly, one time, that's a 50-50 chance, and no one will be impressed, I know that. But if I guess correctly four times in a row, that is a 6.25% chance. And I'm hoping to get that with you. You're going to get that poker face I know. I also, by the way, have a prediction. A prediction inside this envelope. I'll leave right there. And a bunch of random words we'll get to in a moment. Sarah, are you ready? All right, take your hands out just like this. Both hands closed, just like this. Excellent. Sarah! This is, this is what this, this is about. If it's in this hand, I want you to think of a boy. This is a couple's event. It's easy to think of one particular boy. But if it's in this hand, I want you to think of a girl. But I want you to get this really in your mind. Lift your hands just a tiny bit. Perfect. And focus in your mind. If it's in this hand, you're only thinking of a boy. And if it's in that hand, you're thinking of a girl. Do that now in your mind. Focus. Concentrate. Very nice. You are thinking of a boy. Open up that hand. Yes, there it is. Terrific. Please put it behind your back. It's 50-50 the first time. I know that, but I appreciate the, the kindness behind your back. And now you're going to decide which hand it's going. I'll tell you something about yourself I just learned. I put it in your right hand when I gave it to you. You then switched it. That tells me you're a consistent person, and consistent people will now usually switch it back. But you know that I know that, you know that I know that, so you might not want to do it, Sarah. It's a completely free choice. Hands out just like this. <laughs> oh, just, just not taking any chances. Third hand. And separate your hands just a tiny bit, just like this. Excellent. So, this time, we have these words right here. If it's in this hand, I want you to think of a red shirt, but really visualize a red shirt, only if it's in this hand. If it's in the other hand, I want you to think of a black shirt. Now, we're both wearing black shirts. It should be so easy for you to see a black... Perfect. You're thinking of a red shirt. Open up that hand. Yes, there it is. Two times. Now we should be getting somewhere. All right. Hands behind the back. Sarah, you are doing great. You're keeping that poker face. You're playing great. You're playing this BS game well. Uh, whenever you're ready, I want you to take your hands out just like... This is the third time. It gets a little trickier now. Because what you're doing right now is you're thinking, how do I catch him out? I just... I was too consistent. So maybe I should switch it or maybe I should keep it. But who would put it in the same hand three times? Are you crazy? I get it. I get the feeling. So Sarah, whenever you're ready, hands out just like this. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Sorry, this time, if it is in that same hand, but only if it's in this hand, I want you to focus on blue shorts. Uh, the weather has been crazy, right? I mean, you could literally wear shorts, but, but blue shorts in your mind. If it's in the other hand, the hand that would have required you to switch hands, I want you to think of green shorts. Do that now, and without saying anything, focus on that image of green shorts or blue. Excellent, there it is. Blue shorts, open up that hand. Let me see, just show it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, you be polite. All right, hands behind your back, Sarah. Now, Sarah, I can tell you this. When I do this with a gentleman, at this point, they always put it in their back pocket. They inevitably, and half of you are thinking of, I wish I were up there, I put it in my back pocket. But Sarah, you're not going to do that. You're going to play fair, and if you don't have a back pocket, it's even better. But Sarah, before you decide which hand to put it in, since this is the 6.25% chance one, this is what they're all going to clap for you in a moment, uh, I want you to listen to these words carefully. I want you to put it 
in the hand that just feels right, and the hand that's left will be empty. I'm kidding, Sarah, that's just a joke. Uh, whatever, you're ready, hands out, it's a free choice. Hands out just like this. <laughs> Sarah's gonna, Sarah's gonna be uh, switching hands up 17 times before she decides. It's as random as it can be, isn't it? It just seems completely random. Like you're trying to catch me up, but it's, it's a strange feeling or experience. All right, hands out, Sarah. Right now, let's do it. Perfect. This time, if it is in this hand, which would mean that you kept it in the same hand four times, but only if it's in this hand, I want you to think of a bicycle. If it's in this hand, the hand that means you switched it, I want you to think of a skateboard. And really visualize it. You can see that skateboard going, or you can see that bicycle turning, whatever it is, but only if it's in this hand are you thinking of a skateboard. Open up that hand. There it is, four times in a row. Would you like this for everyone to see just for a second? Because you, Sarah, ended up thinking of a boy with a red shirt, blue shorts, and a skateboard, and it was a completely free choice of which hand to put it in. But I said I had a prediction inside this envelope. Inside this envelope is nothing else except for a boy with a red shirt, blue shorts, and a skateboard. And in the very beginning of this little experiment, I ask you, do you know what BS stands for? It stands for? iPhone, the battery isn't about to die, and one of those people's their battery's about to die, so they have, uh, and has a calculator, a calculator app. Raise your hand, please, raise your hand if you have one. Most of you have to have a, a, an iPhone with a calculator. I can tell you, I see someone who is not raising their hand, but the people around them are just pointing to him so much. He's wearing a, uh, a red shirt with glasses, a keeper, and he's smiling. That's right, yes, please stand up and bring your iPhone. Please bring your iPhone. <laughs> Terrific. Come on up, come on up. Yeah, uh, where's your iPhone? You have it? Oh, perfect. Could you unlock it, of course? Open up your uh, calculator. Yeah, sure. And we'll give a big model tell you just got there and have it. Yeah. <laughs> Nina. Lena, nice to meet you. Perfect. This is perfect. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to walk to a table that you were not sat at. I'll hold your phone open so everyone can see. And point to someone who maybe you don't know that well, maybe it just feels random or it feels right, and ask them to stand up by just pointing to them randomly. Go up to a different table, go ahead. I'm going to get out what I need here. Yes, please stand up. Take a picture. I'm just kidding. Uh, please, would you please stand up and uh, bring yourself over to another table and point to someone. Maybe the opposite sex if you could, just so it gets a little bit more random here. And point to them, please. Rabbi, come on up. And please, both of you, join me, join me, join me. All I've been doing is pressing your screen to make sure it doesn't lock. Would you stand right over there, and you two right next to me over here. In fact, you right over there would be perfect. That way you're not influenced by each other's thoughts. I have something here that none of you know what it is. I didn't set up anything with you ahead of time. I told you what was inside. Correct. Same thing with you. Excellent. And of course, you have no idea what's inside. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to put in a random... Let's go with a random uh, three-digit number. Excellent. This times. Could you please put in a random three-digit number? Nice small one. And could you please put in a random two-digit number? And take your phone, please. And press equals. Do you have some big random number now on the screen? Yeah. Right, of course, it's not going to be anything significant. But I would like you so everyone can see it to say each number slowly. The first number is five. 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 Seven. 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 
Seven. I'm oh, hearing two voices, so it's, it's harder. Uh, just one person. I heard five, seven, seven. Three. Three. Four. Four. Five. Five. Nine. Oh, man. Great morning, guys. Basically, nine. 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 Three. Three. That's it? Yep. Oh, that's perfect. It just ended perfectly. Five, seven, seven, three, four, five, nine, nine, three. That is the number on your screen, yes? Yes. That number was generated by taking a random number times your number times your random number, and we didn't set up anything ahead of time. You pressed equals on your phone. If that number is inside here, well, that'd be kind of crazy. Everyone, please give me a round of applause. They take a seat so they can see for themselves. Go take a seat. Just confirm again it was 5773459093, yes? Yes. Excellent. Go take a seat. If it's just inside here, they're all going to think you're wearing cahoots, guys. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. I packed the wrong container. This is uh, embarrassing. Uh, please, someone, what, what did I bring here? They are. Eggshells. <laughs> yeah, I didn't bring the, the number. Oh, I know what happened. I didn't have a chance to do any of the magic. It was your random numbers on your phone. You press equals. I bring eggshells. I'll do the magic now. Eggshells. 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 Oh. <laughs> Everyone, please make some noise for my three amazing participants. That's me. All right. You know, speaking of predictions, predictions, we have all these interesting predictions. I have a prediction inside this bag. And I can't think of a better spot than this little spot right there to hold it. There's someone in this room that I'm going to be using for this, and they're sat right over here. It's this seat. Just go so you stay there. This seat, I have a feeling, will be the right person for what's inside that bag. We're going to come to that at the end of the show. But now I'd like everyone to start thinking back to their childhood. Their childhood. And I want in your mind for you to replay these memories of being a child and seeing a pet. Now, if you did not have a childhood pet yourself, you might recall a neighbor or a friend who had a pet. And you remember their name. You can remember what this pet looked like. As I get out my... Sharpies and cards. Please raise your hand. That means about seven people. Uh, raise your hand if you were able to recall the name of a childhood pet. Over here. Keep your hands raised so I can see. That's one, two. Any ladies? Uh, yes, you as well. Uh, you. Perfect. And over here. Excellent. And I stay one group side only so that I, I don't look like I'm doing anything sneaky. But. What I'd like you to do, if you're raising your hand, and keep your hands raised, is to get this name in your mind. I'm going to hand you a card and a sharpie. If I give you a card, I'd like you to hold it sideways, like this. On the very top, I'd like you to write your name in clear, bold letters, so later everyone can see it nicely. And then underneath, in clear, bold letters, I want you to write the name of this childhood pet, very cleanly, so that everyone can see it later. The name of this childhood pet. Only if I give you a card. But when I give you a card, please don't write anything until I've walked away and I look away. So I'm going to stay on this side if I could. So you can put your hands down if you're on that side. If I hand you a card, keep your hand raised, please. Uh, yes, please take a card and a sharpie. Don't write anything yet, please. You as well. Excellent. I see you're raising your hand. If you could please grab a sharpie and a card. And if I'm not mistaken, there were some ladies on this side. If, anyone, if there's any ladies, that would be helpful. Uh, yes, you. If you could just take one card and a sharpie. Don't write anything down yet, but you remember what to do, right? Your name on top and then underneath the name of the childhood pet. Uh, we have someone right here. Excellent. What is your name? Don't tell me. I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, and uh, was there anyone else? Terrific. You the young lady here. Would you grab one card? There's two left. 
There's two cards. I know it's a little bit sticky uh, when they're just two, but there's one. And please remember, don't write anything down yet. And you, so would you please? Are you raising your hand? Yes, you remember a childhood pet name. Take that one last card. And that's right. Don't write anything yet. Don't write anything yet. Wait till I walk away. All right, terrific. If you have a card, I would like you now to please hold it sideways and write down the name of your name right on top and very clearly underneath the name of your childhood pet. Please do that now. Please write down this childhood pet name. And uh, I'm going to ask everyone else to please join me now in stretching out your hands. Stretch out your hands, everyone else, while they're writing that down. Stretch them out. They're really stretch them out. Excellent, just like that. And if you could, now take your hands and bring them down so that the thumbs are down. Only if you don't have a card. And uh, keep it down like that. Take your left hand, your left hand, put it over your right, and clasp your fingers. Hey, get over here. Stand right next to me. Where are you? Join me. Join me. Come over here. Yeah, right over here, right next to me. Great. Hands out like this, and then thumbs down. Left hand. Take your left hand over your right, and clasp your fingers. We all did the same thing. This is perfect. Now, take your pointer fingers and point them out. And your thumbs, these thumbs right here, th point them down. So it looks like an upside down water gun. On the count of three, we're all going to do the same thing together. Because we started together, we're going to end together. One, two, three, thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Go, go where I've got your go. Go. Be careful, I don't want to get spilled. Uh, if you have your card, if you have your card, please take the Sharpie and cover it. Then, put the card face down in your hand. If it's face up, it's not mind reading, it's just reading. So please keep it face down. And put the Sharpie inside this tin and the card in my hand. That is perfect. I think there were some people over here. The card goes face down. Make sure it's face down. You as well, face down. Just the card. You have to be careful. Excellent. And I believe there were some people over here as well. Uh, there's a young lady over here. Excellent. Terrific. And yes, if you could do that. Oh, and, and you can tell me your name, right? I know. Perfect. Excellent. And was there someone over here? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, there were two more people. And the Sharpie. And you as well, face down in my hand. And as everyone is watching, you can see that these are staying face down. And I need a participant to help me out. You haven't helped me. I know. Would you please stand up and join me right over here? Excellent. I'd like you to take these cards and face down, mix them up so they're in a random sequence, although I have a terrible memory. It's possible I could remember who was where. So face down, keep them face down, like this, so yeah, no one can see underneath. And start mixing them up, that's perfect. And while you're doing that, I'll tell you that uh, the selection you make just has to feel right. It has to just be completely random or just a gut instinct. And whenever you're ready, just take one out. Take one out and slide it face down inside this envelope. That's excellent. Terrific. I want you to hold on to this one. The other ones we don't need. I'm going to keep them face down right over there. But you can stay right here. I have another card, and I need someone now to think of a childhood friend. It's a lot easier than a pet if you've never had a pet. But uh, you could definitely right now be thinking of a childhood friend. Someone that you went to school with, went to camp with, played on your block, who you could vividly remember the details of their face, their laugh, their smile, anything like that. Get it in your mind, and please raise your hand. Raise your hand if you are thinking of someone who is a childhood friend. That is uh, interesting. I'd like if you could point. Actually, not point. Go over to someone and point to them if they're raising their hand. Thank you. You found someone? Who is it? Please stand up and join me right over here. On this card, I want you to write the childhood friend's name right across the top. When you're done, I want you to close the flap. Wait till I turn around. 
And I know there's a camera there, but I'll, I'll try to make sure. Just write their name down, and then push it down into the envelope, and then close the flap. Have you done that? I'll take the envelope. Excellent. Now, I don't want to lick it closed because I, you know, you have to show me there. Would you come back? And you can take a seat. Come back. If you could take these two envelopes, and be careful because of the, the flap that's kind of open. I want you to, behind your back, stand right over here. Behind your back, start mixing them up a little bit. One over the other, and then just so that you just kind of forget which one is which. Does that make sense? So, I don't think I <laughs> I already forgot <laughs> which one I handed to you. Now, I want you to take your hands and hold them to the sides, just like this. One in one hand, one in the other, and stand right next to me. And we'll be on the camera. That's perfect. Now, I don't know which one has the childhood pet. Who you selected with the childhood pet in one of the envelopes. I do know the other envelope is yours. Uh, what is your name? Yaakov. Yaakov? Yaakov, you're thinking of a childhood uh, friend. And that's in one of the envelopes. This is where it gets fun. I want you just to stay very still. <laughs> The one in your left hand, I have just a feeling that that is the one with the childhood pet. Please raise your hand if you were one of the people who have a childhood pet that was written down. Nice little number of you. Don't. Stay still. It's coming from right over here. The feeling I'm getting is coming from probably one of these two ladies. Um, and I'm getting a name that starts, and I think you, I, as a joke, I think I was joking with you, and I think you might have said your name, but I actually didn't catch it. The name I'm getting, not the pet name, but the person who wrote it, the one that you just took out randomly, starts with an N. Was the name, that, do you have an N also in your name? Yeah. It is also an N? That's, that's interesting. You both have an N that you wrote down. That's interesting. So I do have an N. You might have told me, but I forgot, and you and I haven't heard at all your name. The, there's another letter that just is coming to me right now. It's an I. Is there an I in your name? What about yours? Okay, so we, what? Uh, uh, it was, was it Nina? Yes. Excellent, Nina. Your childhood pet name. You haven't told it to me before the show, correct? And it might not even be in that envelope. In fact, it might not even be in either envelope, <coughs> depending on which one you took out. But Nina. I want you to send me a mental image of this pet. Picture their size, it's small. Is it small? It was big. Very interesting, this is a big dog. It was big or no? Is it a dark dog? Brown. Very interesting. I want you to send me the name, you know what, don't say anything out loud, but send me the name, it's a short name, you just, it's so, yes? It is a short name. It's not even short for something else, like Artie for Arthur. It's, it's, it's just a short name, right? Keep focusing it and send me a mental image of the letters. I noticed there was an I in your name. There's an I in your, child, in your childhood pet's name as well, yes? This feels a little spooky, I know. But <laughs> I want you to send me, it's so short, I have a feeling I'm, I'm only two letters off. I think it's like three letters. I think you're thinking of, uh, What's the name of your childhood pet? Big. Everyone, please make some noise for me on the right side of my head. Let me take this if I could. And the other one, well, we know, we know it's yours, if this is right. It's possible. This isn't.